The rifle was purchased in Illinois, and the information we have thus far is that it appears to have been purchased legally by Cremo. Police revealing today that the Illinois parade shooting suspect purchased his weapon legally in the state where some of the strictest gun laws in the country are in place. So is stricter gun control the answer here? Joining us now for more is Pam Bondi, former Florida Attorney General and AFPI Center for Law and Justice co-chair. Pam, great to see you. Thank you for being here. It's a tough subject. Thanks, I you mean, too, David. We've, we've got a list of some of the, the, the rules that Illinois places on gun purchase purchasing, and it is really the toughest in the nation. It clearly didn't stop this wacko mm -hmm. from, I have to say the word allegedly, but allegedly from buying a gun and killing people. Uh, but when you have gun control laws like this, is more gun control the answer? No, of course it's of course it's not, and and, and the Supreme Court ruled that. In, in the Texas case, they ruled that the Second Amendment, you have the right to bear arms and to carry your firearms in this country. That's our Second Amendment right. And as we've talked about before, it's about mental health. It's about other things, too. And as Chicago has some of the toughest gun laws, Illinois, these other states with super tough gun laws do not stop this from happening. It's the people that are doing this, not the guns. And, you know, I think law-abiding citizens have the right to defend themselves, and the highest court has spoken on that issue. And that's the Democrats now trying to deflect on, and what's happening is horrible. The shootings are horrible throughout the country. But saying that it's about the Second Amendment and it's about abortion and going after our Supreme Court, um, it's just that's not going to change everything that's happening in our country right now. Well, and, and again, as you say, is something they much deeper. deflect on everything. The deflecting is going on, but the depth with which uh, we're faced right now, I mean, you, you, you have the pandemic, you have the ripping apart of the social fabric, you have all kinds of things affecting, you have the, the social media, which again, uh, so often happens, this guy was, uh, was apparently addicted yeah. to and was, was putting up there. It's, it's all intensified, the destructive force, and of course the families, the breakup of the families, and the time the pandemic gave people that are disturbed more time in front of their computer to, to do the awful things that they were doing in front of their computer. That's what we have to take. But you, you can't, that's, that doesn't involve gun laws, do it, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't involve gun laws. And, you know, this guy allegedly had posted um, a lot of really violent things yeah. on his social media. So I'm wondering, I know it'll come out later, but I'm wondering if people had called the police, if people, if there were warning signs out there, um, if he had a big, he, evidently he had some type of following. And if the Chicago PD or the, or the Highland Park Police Department, if they were notified, if they knew what was going on and didn't have the support to do anything about it. Because, you know, you've got Chicago right near there with Lori Lightfoot, and she's all about defund the police, reimagine the police. She's not giving the men and women in blue the tools that they need to keep us safe out there. So, um, you know, you wonder what would happen if we had more law enforcement officers out there helping us. You know, you mentioned Chicago, which is right next door. I think Evanston is immediately south of this mm -hmm. place, and then you have Chicago immediately south yeah. of that. 54 people were shot in Chicago over the, over the holiday weekend. Seven people killed. This mm -hmm. is Chicago now we're talking about. Uh, I just grabbing some, some headlines. Chicago shooting man shot after con confronting a person trying to break into his car. That was in Burnside. Chicago police, boy 10, a 10-year-old boy was wounded inside his bedroom after shots fired outside his Englewood home pierced through the wall in his bedroom. I mean, this this is the world. I mean, we're, it's really literally a war zone in places in Chicago, places in yeah. L.A., places in New York, places all around the country. That's what has to Oregon. be attacked, is the fact that the all of the, the hauling back of police, cutting their power, uh, cutting their proactive policing has created this kind of environment. You know, and the Democrats come out with this, let's reimagine police. Let's send social workers out in the middle of the night. Do you remember when all that was happening? Yeah, yeah, Let's course. defund the police. And and Lori Lightfoot was right at the top of that, you know, leading that cheer to do that in her own city. And 
you wonder why you can't recruit police officers. Right. They don't have the backup from their leadership, which is the mayor. They have to have the backup of leadership. And they don't have the tools they need. You know, look at NYPD, David. Mass exodus. So mm -hmm. many NYPD officers are retiring. They can't recruit and keep officers because it's not safe because there aren't enough officers and they don't receive the support they need. And a brand new Rasmussen poll said, you know, we're talking the Democrats going after gun control, going after abortion, January 6th show trial that they're going after. Instead of looking at the polling, they have lost touch. Rasmussen poll just showed the number two thing people care about, crime. Number one, as you and Kevin were just talking about, inflation. That's what your everyday average American, that's what we care about. We care when we go to the yeah. gas pump and look at the gas pump, but the Democrats are so out of touch. Instead of saying, we need to help our law enforcement officers, we need to give them more tools they need. The first thing, one of the first things Joe Biden did was take away the tools law enforcement yep. officers needed Absolutely. that President Trump had given them while in office, meaning the surplus military equipment. I, I defer to you on all things involving criminal activity and, and how, to, how to stop it. But on, on one point, I would disagree slightly. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, when he turned this city around in the mid-1990s, he sent a cop out with social workers, and they went out to all the homeless, particularly the, the most dangerous homeless, and he said, he said, look, this social worker, the cop said, this social worker will help you get a job, will help you get off drugs or alcohol, yeah. whatever you want, but one of your choices is not to stay here. If you don't go with him, I'm going to take you to the police station and you'll have to spend time in jail. Uh, but he'll give you plenty of options yeah. in order to get a job, to get off of whatever you're on that's, that's affecting you negatively. So that, that pairing of social service workers with cops, yes. but not providing a way for a person to stay on the street and do harm to himself or others. That's, that's what he did. And David, we wholeheartedly agree on that point. That's called community policing, yes. and we interact. We enacted it when I was a prosecutor in Tampa as well. But that's sending a social worker out with a police officer, not instead of a right. police officer in the middle of the night. Yep, yep, absolutely. I agree with you. Pam Bondi, good to see you. Thank you very much for being here, Pam. Appreciate it.